on, on, but on shorter paces, I do well because I can pretty much hold the whole paper in my head while I write it. So I can rearrange it in my head and, and I do all right, but it still takes a long time because, you know, I have to do it at long. I can't put it down. I have to write it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens with longer papers is like, you know, even especially as I age, I can't do that anymore. So, but I've never really practiced using an outline and writing a, a paper models. And I just, it was very challenging. So I, I, I spent a lot of time writing papers because pretty much of my inability, I think, to keep my thoughts um, organized and, you know, retain the flow of the paper between settings, you know, so I don't have to sit down and write it all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in luck. Because guess what yeah. I do during the day? <laughs> no I am the director of disability support services at one of the universities in D.C. So I have, uh, <laughs> I have. Wow, several, God is good. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm here to tell you, I have uh, several specialties, and one of them is working with adult students with disabilities. <laughs> so, oh, well, that's that's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I tell anyone I get it. Um, I'm undiagnosed, and so I've diagnosed myself 20 years ago that I have ADD, and so yeah. um, I know what you mean. I know what it feels like. Um, mm -hmm. I tell students in a heartbeat, like, I get it. I, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> you know? um, but you, to me, it's a good thing, too, about being. Oh, yeah. I can get, like, hyper-focused. You're right. I got to do it. It's just kind of, like, it's got to get done right then. I can't get up until finish. Right? <laughs> I do the same thing, you know, and mm. people are like, oh, you're punishing yourself. No, I, I, I can't. Y'all don't get it. I got to get this done. Um, and, and I ain't going to remember it. Yeah. Not gonna remember, and that's that's exactly right. Uh, so I I completely get it. I I am right here with you. I'm 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 your sister. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I completely get it. So mm -hmm. the thing that I would recommend, and I was looking at, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that that thing. This is how I do it. So I'm just gonna okay. tell you, like I did. Um, I've always had a lot of jobs. Like right now, I have five believe it or not, oh and uh, yeah. yeah, and one of them, I'm a pastor of a church, is one of them, and um, I'm full-time wow. faculty at a university, I'm this, I do the right, I'm the writing specialist for, right, can't you tell I'm ADD? Yeah, you have a, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I can identify, I only have two jobs well, right now. Well, I was like, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so I tell people, uh, you know, uh, I have to, if, if I don't manage my time, then my time manages me, so that's, that's yeah. number one. And so right. I'm, I do better with um, more things in the pot um, than mm -hmm. fewer things in the pot. Because if not... Yeah, I just, if I come up have all day to do one thing, I will take all day to do one thing. Right, exactly. Um, so I, I completely get it. So, like, I worked on... I worked on the MDiv. Um, mm -hmm. When I did the MDiv, it was 93 credits. So I did the MDiv full-time... Uh, mm -hmm. at Liberty, um, and I did it online, Lord help me, and yeah. we did, uh, I did it full-time, five classes every uh, eight weeks, was that what it was? I oh, think my it was, God. I did five classes, and I was working on my first doctorate at the same time. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> So, I was a full-time. You sleep? <laughs> right. So, <Yeah. laughs> I, did, I did that, and I also teach at Montgomery College, so uh -huh. I, if you can only imagine, I had those preps to do, and uh, I yeah. teach writing for them, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, so uh, just around the clock, and um, my last, I did a 93 credit program, and I started January 2014, December 2015, I was done, wow. like, I was done already, um, oh they gosh. gave me permission to do six classes for the last five weeks, because I did mm -hmm. well. And they were like, they couldn't believe it, but yeah, but <laughs> you know. Wow. Yeah. So. You're a high performing ADD. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I completely get it. And then what I did was when I was finishing out, and I just did back to back. So then I mm -hmm. finished, before I finished my first doctorate, I went ahead and started the second doctorate. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so what are your, what are your doctorates in? So my first one is in education. Uh -huh. and, um, so educational leadership. And then my second mm -hmm. one is in ministry. 
a women oh, and wow. men um, and together working is um, leadership together in ministry. So, uh -huh. yeah. So if you can only imagine. <laughs> uh, so Sounds like people, I came to the right place. Huh? Sounds like I came to the right place. Yeah. So that's why when, <laughs> I, when, you, when I saw your thing, I was like, hmm. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you know, we're probably kin, kin, kindred spirits yeah. here. So. Yeah. And, what, and I'm telling you the way I, I got through all this because it was nothing but writing and writing and writing. If you can only imagine all the discussion was, all the mm -hmm. papers due every week for five classes every week was uh, phenomenal, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not that type. I have a calendar, but the calendar has blank pages <laughs> because I'm just not that person, you know? Yeah, I try. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know? So I, I, um, and I tell my students this all the time. I said, so this is how I manage was mm -hmm. I looked at the syllabus, the respective syllabus for each class <clears throat> each week. That's my best friend. So I kept it mm -hmm. like I have my external, I know you can see it, but my external yeah. hard drive and right. I have to organize everything on this external hard drive. And then I lose my mind when I can't find it and when it doesn't work. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. I hope you back it up. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, you know, it is. <laughs> and, uh, and the way I did it was to literally every week I would look at the syllabus and mm -hmm. I would, so I knew classes. So like, for example, uh, at Liberty, um, I knew that um, discussion boards were due Friday night by 11.59. I knew mm -hmm. that papers were due Sunday night by 11.59. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, that's the way I knew, I would keep the schedule in my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I would look every week, what's due for this week? I try not to overwhelm myself because mm -hmm. for me, I shut down. Like if I get too overwhelmed, then that's just a done deal. Like, mm -hmm. You know, and so um, I, that's how I handle it. So I was like, okay, what's due the first week of class for each class and then i would just mm -hmm. write it down <clears throat> like in a little notebook i mean just you know just so i can try mm -hmm. to keep up with it and then for me what works is little check marks <laughs> mm -hmm. i have to go old school i mean that's the way i handle it and i would write down okay week one these are the five things to do whatever's due and then it just does something for me when i can do a little check off and say mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten it done um, for this and then when the whole thing is done, I can um, check it off and I can move on to the um, the following week and, and there, yeah. I don't know what it is, but that helps me out to, to stay focused. Just something that's yeah. simple. I um, use these and then when they're done, I throw them away. I just set them out. Oh my god, you use sticky notes. Okay, I'm gonna tell you oh, this. Yeah. I was the queen of sticky notes. I have been <laughs> redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> they're so I, easy to lose. I mean, oh my God, cause they are easy to get loose. I used to have them like at my, especially at work, I would have little yellow sticky notes all over my desk, on my computer, um, mm -hmm. you know, just everywhere. And then somebody would come in and touch a sticky note. I was just ready to, you know, <laughs> have a come to Jesus meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't touch my sticky notes. <laughs> so I finally was, you know, thank God I am all mm -hmm. for sticky notes, but something like this you know i can carry it with me not have to worry about where's my sticky note um yeah that's, i'm trying to get to i bought these little things you can put them in your pocket yeah yeah so um it, it goes okay sometimes not so good you know but <laughs> other times it does but it's uh you know i keep them close at hand so that's what i'm trying to work on now yeah so that's that's making progress that really really helps i'm telling you and so as far as like brainstorming, so this is how I would tell you, um, like organizing your paper. So like, mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can, hold on, I think I kept your paper open. <clears throat> I think you, uh, which one was it? Yeah, final paper. All right, hold on one second. Can you see your paper? No, I can see that you've started screen sharing. Okay. I can't see anything. There it is. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, so, 
Okay. So this, um, I said you're you're a great writer. I can tell that. So hooray, kudos. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes. Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> there were just a couple of things that I highlighted in here just to to advise you to not do. Um, yeah. But what I want to say is that this is the easiest way to do an assignment will help with time. The, mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it is to look at the assignment sheet. And that assignment sheet is your outline. Okay. Okay. Um, as instructors, we do not um, pull stuff out of the sky. Like right. um, a lot of students I've talked to, they, they get nervous. They don't know how to answer the question, how to, how to even begin to write the essay. So that wastes mm -hmm. a lot of time. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm promising you one thing about seminary uh, for sure is that, uh, and probably more so than anyone else that I've ever dealt with as a program, mm -hmm. um, is that um, seminary um, seminarians are very specific in what they're looking for for a paper. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is a new kind of writing style for me. I, I, I work in the Department of Defense. And you know, one page is usually the limit. Two, right. if you really have a lot to say. So, it's I'm learning how to try to be more less brief in what I write, less curt. Right. So yeah. So it's different because here, of course, we want you to be concise, but we mm -hmm. want you to expound upon your ideas because right. if not, what what good is it, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to use your research on top of it. So. Um, I mean, like I said, this paper is 16 pages long, so I mean, it, you're definitely doing more than the defense, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> used to do it. A little bit. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm going to tell you to do. So your mm -hmm. outline comes from the, and this is how I did mine. I, so mm -hmm. I always, I have a thing about I have to have the paper in my hand. Like mm -hmm. since, we've, since we've been here for COVID-19, I have a printer upstairs. But I just haven't had time to, to wrap my mind around putting the ink cartridge in. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. But yeah. um, if I were still in school, I would have to because right. I have to have the paper. That's mm -hmm. just me. I don't know about you, but I see you guys. Yeah, I do. I still print things off. Yeah, you know, and it's just you have to have that tangible piece of paper. And mm -hmm. um, so. And, and so the way I would always do it is I look to see what the assignment is asking. And right. from the question of the assignment, you're going to get your thesis statement. Literally, that's what you're pulling mm -hmm. from. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you're going to look to see what questions your professor is asking you to answer. Mm -hmm. Those questions technically become your headings in your paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just the, the easiest format for an outline to, to do it without even having to write a regular outline because I don't recommend anyone to do uh, Roman numeral one, big letter A, little I, I and little I, I, you know, I don't recommend that. Because yeah, I, I, I've tried. <laughs> no, it takes too much time unless you have no choice, you know, unless mm -hmm. your professor is asking you for that. Um, well, they ask us to do a, an outline that what usually ends up happening is, you know, dividing and subdividing the thoughts gets hard. Um, usually what I end up doing is what you said. I'll answer all the questions and then I'll move them around on the page until they flow. And then, uh, then I'll try to make them flow together. That's mm -hmm. pretty much how I write. Yeah, so. I mean... And that's the good thing about writing is, yes, we have a format for the framework of an essay. However, to get your thoughts, I mean, yeah, we tell you all these, um, <clears throat> you know, there are pre-writing strategies that you can use to brainstorming and um, you can, they even tell you, you can watch a movie, it just depends, you know, you can interview, yeah. there's a little bit of everything that you can do, uh, focus writing, uh, non-focus writing, whatever, to get your mind going. But at the end of the right. day, it is just, it is about the product that you produce. That's the good thing about it, is that no one is judging you on um, how you come up with the paper. That's the good right. news about it, you know. Um, but to me, that's the easiest way to do it, and that mm -hmm. is to print off the, the assignment sheet and use your assignment sheet as your guide. When you're doing that, um, like I said, you can check off, that is technically your outline. Um, and sometimes, like I said, in seminary, they, they're very specific. They will even ask you to come up with an outline. They'll ask you, um, they will take certain papers that are longer length papers, 
um, and tell you, for example, during week two, I want you to give me a thesis statement and um, you need to give me a topic, a thesis statement and, you know, whatever. During week three, you need to come up with, you know, introduction. And I mean, they'll do that to try to help you out um, and almost to help you to, to have a finished product on time in the end. Yeah, that's what they did with this. We had to turn in elements, like yeah. pieces of the paper at a time. Yeah. So, so and, and, and that helps, right? Um, I don't know. I, it was harder for me because uh, I get horrible at it, to tell you the truth, because yeah. it kind of disjoined the paper for me. Yeah. I turned in so many individual elements, I thought rocket, and he's like, this has nothing to do with the rest of the paper. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, yeah, so that's, that's what I mean. I just, I lost continuity. When I did that, I lost continuity with the rest of the paper. So I'm trying to find a way to, to do that, you know, for writing longer papers. Yeah, I, I think I had like three assignments where I sent them in. I, my wife even read them like, oh, this is great. And I got them back from <laughs> the professors like, no, this is nothing like what I was looking for. And wow. So, yeah, it was, it, part of it is I didn't understand exegesis. Uh, until I made a few mistakes and recovered from them. Now I understand. Right. It. But, right. Um, it was, but it was is really hard to get the paper to be coherent. That's I I I just really struggle with that to carry the thought all the way through and and have a you know make sure the theme applied throughout. It was the doing it in chunks just kind of you know it was harder. But <laughs> it was easier. Usually well, when I write a paper, I'll write like a whole bunch and then I'll go back and add more to it. And then like put in a skeleton and then add to the skeleton and then rough it out, you know, that well, makes sense. Well, yeah, and, and honestly, if that works for you and you want to, if, if, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say if that works for you, then you might just have to continue doing that. And then, then you can go back and clean it. And I mean, literally, it, that would work because I tell students that you need fresh eyes anyway, and you can't have fresh eyes if you are, the paper is, the assignment is due um, tonight. Um, what is this? Hold on one second. Dr. Pat just emailed me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she's talking about. Hold on. Can you hold on one second for me? Sure, go ahead. I don't even know where she emailed me at. Okay. <clears throat> but um, what I was saying was, I think if that works, then um, that's how you can have the fresh pair of eyes. For you, I think that will work. Go ahead and knock it out. Um, put all the work down front, and then it gives you a chance to go back in and clean it up and stay focused. And that's the main thing is staying focused. So like this assignment, uh, other students, I read a few other papers um, uh, with this assignment right here that you were doing. And once again, uh, the what the professor asked for, I don't think this is the same professor. Who's your professor for this class? Gary Spade. Yeah, it might have been the same one because I know I read some of his students' papers. <clears throat> but it was very detailed in saying this is, you know, what the assignment, what I'm looking for. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Right, and the, with the outline, I'm telling you, I, and I was just, you know, um, skimming through your paper. I was like, yeah, he did all of you. You did it, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Um, so that's that's the main thing. And that's a part of the writing process. And part of the writing process is that you take the time to go from drafting all the way to quote, unquote, publication. And the publication mm -hmm. would be you actually, in this case, presenting your paper to your professor. And just taking the time to realize that it takes time. There is no such thing as a perfect paper. 
you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so um, I just think whatever works for you, you're going to have to continue to make it work. There is no, um, there is no cookie cut answer for mm -hmm. it. You know, um, like I said, I know for me, that's the way I always uh, was able to get stuff done is by printing the paper, the assignment um, out yeah. and by using the assignment sheet as my outline. That's, I do that too. That really does help. Like I gotta be able to, I like when I revise it, I usually print off the last paper, yes. and put my fingers on it, write yeah. notes, and then I'll go do it. And then I always have the assignment sheet either up on a computer screen or, and, and that's the way I did this one too. I, you know, you know, you know, every element had like a bunch of questions you had to answer. So I would right. just answer all the questions and then kind of move those around. Right. Um, what did you make on this paper? Uh, well, I, I went to pass fail, so I got a pass. But okay. You said it was a good paper. You said it was mm -hmm. a solid paper. <clears throat> yeah, it's a solid paper. Like I, said, I didn't even read all of it, but it's, I'm telling you, it is definitely a solid paper. Yeah. Solid. I enjoyed writing it. Yeah, you you did a great you did a great job with it. What I wanted to point out was just some of the things, and yeah. I'll email this to you. Um, yeah, please do. Like, um, so like here in the beginning, if you can see where I'll make it a little bigger, um, mm -hmm. it's like some some of the comma rules. A lot of times, um, you got to be careful with the commas. There are about twelve, thirteen comma rules, and mm -hmm. um, and one of them here would be in the beginning, um, disturbing mm -hmm. comma yet yeah. now. We know yet is a coordinating conjunction and you use it with two independent clauses. However, you can put a comma there when you have a, uh, how can I say, when the first part of the sentence is a distinct shift or the second part of the sentence is a distinct right. shift from the first part. And so okay. I would definitely would have recommended you put a comma there. When you okay. get here, so where this- Where can I read, where can I find out what the comma rules are? If you email me and just say, will you send me the common rules? I'll send them to you. I have, I, I teach that every semester. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Just send it to me as a reminder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I <laughs> okay. And I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So like this, um, so what we look for in formatting is that your last sentence here should be your thesis statement. Normally, mm -hmm. when you introduce your thesis statement, introduce it with a transitional word. So there are like four pages mm -hmm. of transitional words as well. If you want me to send those to you, I can send them to you. Yeah, I um, think I have a bunch, but yes, please. Okay. Um, and normally with, with those, um, there are only a few that you can use to even introduce the thesis statement. Like, um, therefore, consequently, um, as a result. Those are like the ones you can usually mm -hmm. use to introduce your thesis statement. Um, you know, you could have said that, that right there. Therefore, comma, Abraham's unquestioned yeah. response to this, that fits fine. I highlighted we, because we, of course, is a pronoun, which means you plus I. In mm -hmm. academic writing, so this paper is strictly academic. Now, mm -hmm. normally, you're not supposed to use we. We is first person plural. Mm -hmm. um, so some professors are really sticklers about that. Some aren't. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know what. Uh, Professor Stasak, I said, but just try to get out of that habit um, mm -hmm. of using we, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so example of the blessings that um, today's congregants, today's, okay. you know, church, um, mm -hmm. received, whatever, right? So you mm -hmm. want to stick to third person, and it's easier to do third person, plural for the most part. And I'm recording this for you because I know that, and I'll send this to you. you can go oh, back great. And, Thank you. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> no, you can go back and listen to it. Yeah. Um, and so um, that way you can, uh, so anyway, so just, just be careful with that. Um, it's mm -hmm. easier, like I said, to use third person plural. All mm -hmm. right. So now the next thing that I highlighted was right here on the historical context. You have many scholars, and then you put in parentheses the names of scholars. This mm -hmm. easier just to say Kitchen McNeil and with now, don't say and mm -hmm. friends. I don't know who, who they are. Okay. Okay. It's almost like saying ETC for et cetera. In academic mm -hmm. writing, you don't use ETC. Okay. Okay. So just say that. Don't don't say many scholars. Just if you want to say that, you can say many scholars, comma, mm -hmm. such as Kitchen McNeil, comma, okay. and Wendell, comma, date the story to like that. Mm -hmm. All right, um, moving down here, 
you use so. Once again, mm -hmm. so is a coordinating conjunction. Mm -hmm. You cannot begin a sentence with so in academic writing. So mm -hmm. the coordinating conjunction, just, just as a, a reminder, we always call them the fanboys, but for, mm -hmm. uh, and, nor, but, oh um, boy, or, yet, and so. Okay. And so they make your writing less academic. They make your writing informal. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of, of, of doing that. Okay. Okay. Here so I have- So it's like a therefore or something there? Yes, that's right. So again, if you want me to put that in the little email, I can send you a list of, uh, I have like four pages of transitional words. Yep. Okay. Um, here I highlighted family because it's not the word family, but there was no family. You put comma and no land. The comma you would not put here. So when, when you see the comma rules, you'll know. But okay. what, what happened here is a lot of times students will see the word or use the word and and they automatically think there should be a comma in front of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. That's probably what you were just thinking. Mm -hmm. But just remember, you only use a comma um, in, like, for example, like this, in a list. If you said okay. there was no family, comma, no food, comma, and no land. Right. OK. OK. Um, but this, you would not do so. It would have to be at least three uh, in a C. It would have to be a series. Okay, okay, good. All right, here, so the next one is highlighted. It's just like we said the last time. Yeah. You wouldn't do this. Okay. Same thing again with we. Uh, mm -hmm. Try not to use that. Again, that's you and I, and you do not want to speak directly to the reader. Um, okay. So in academic writers, you, writing, you don't speak directly to the reader? No. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, and you know what? It's so funny. Like, I used to teach at a university. I'm, I live down here in Upper Marlboro, and I used okay. to teach at one of the universities not too far from me um, uh -huh. at Bowie State. And it was so yeah. funny. Yeah, so uh, I was the youngest professor there. Like, I started, I Whoa. became a professor at 24. So I'm only 26. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I was 24 years old as a professor. And, um, and it was what was funny about it was there was a student came to me, um, uh -huh. and and so I used to also I was I've all so one of my other things is I've directed writing center. So the mm -hmm. the student came to me and she was like Professor Clark. That was her English one hundred and two professor. She was like mm -hmm. Professor Clark, look at my paper. It had the biggest F I've ever seen on a paper. <laughs> I mean, it was like this whole paper, <laughs> yeah. right? And she was like, oh my god, and she was crying. And uh, I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? She said, uh, I got an F. I was like, yeah, you got an F. <laughs> and, uh, so she said, why did I get an F? I said, well, let me look. And so I will never forget this. The paper was about uh, her relationship. So we try not to now allow students to uh, write on personal topics because mm -hmm. um, you get caught up in you and I, right? right? Um, and so she was writing about her first relationship and i will never forget it like the introduction her, professor clark only read the introduction mm -hmm. and, and i'm making this up but this was something close to it she wrote something yeah. like oh the first time i saw you my heart fluttered yeah. right? <laughs> she was like and then all oh, this was the introduction and then you walked closely to me and i just knew you could hear my heartbeat and and then in the introduction she was like and then you held my hand and you leaned over and kissed me and the stars fell from heaven <laughs> you're like oh my god she had all of this in the introduction and it was like therefore the best relationship i've ever had was with my boyfriend jimmy because <laughs> you know and she, <laughs> and she had the biggest f on her paper and I was like, wow. I said, I didn't know you and Professor Clark had a thing uh, going on. I said, because this paper said you and I. And I said, so that, yeah, I said, and then you said we. I said, and when you do that, you are speaking specifically to the person that is reading the paper. Okay. Yeah. So she's. You're not supposed to do that. 
Scott, no, you're not supposed to, unless your professor gives you permission, but in academic mm -hmm. writing, you want to stay if, yeah, as, as close, you stay away from it as much as possible. Did not know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> here in the next one, you said it's development continued over centuries well and two. Um, just again, be careful with your punctuation with the mm -hmm. comma well and two. Um, it's almost the way you um, phrase that is almost conversational. So you just want yeah. to um, stay away from that. Um, down here on page two, um, mm -hmm. you have, you end it with a footnote. Now the rule is this. Um, citations are used to show support to your writing. So they, they normally are not in the introduction. They cannot be your topic sentence and they cannot be your concluding sentence. Right. Okay. So anyone looking at this, and I'm just wanted to tell you this, just moving when you, as you move further, but yeah. just looking at this would tell me he's using a quote as his concluding sentence when technically you should be tying up this piece on historical context. You see what right. I'm saying? So be careful with doing that. You could have just come up with just a little tie-in line uh, of sentence behind that quote. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's what that's about. <clears throat> um, well, so mm -hmm. that really wasn't a, so for footnotes, huh? I paraphrased that, but I got the idea yes. from the source. Right. That's correct. Because when you, Paraphrase, you are still, I have to cite that right. person's idea. Yes. Right. So you could have just ended. They needed to trust and knew that God would store the fullness of the blessing of the land and nation, which he promised them long ago. And even in which he promised them long ago, um, this, I don't know, whatever, you yeah, know, yeah. doing so would have shown, you know, doing whatever. Got it. Got it. Okay. You, you know so what I mean? My own. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm just going to put here. Don't end with a quote. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Don't end yep. paragraph with a quote. Okay. All right. All right. So then moving to the next one. Here, you said, I will discuss. This is what we call an announcement. Okay. So you didn't have to say that. He already knew what you needed to discuss. <laughs> like he already asked you for the outline, right? Mm -hmm. That was a part of this. So what you should have said is um, the Abraham cycle. Um, okay. Below is the below is a detailed analysis of this significance. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm-hmm. Boom. That takes mm -hmm. you out of it. Now it's academic. Okay. Okay. So no I, no we, no me. Right. No us. Okay. No, only if the paper is directed. Like, I, I know one of the students reached out to me and she's writing um, dialogues to her professor and he's mm -hmm. asking her specific questions about her ministry. Then mm -hmm. it's fine for her to answer I. Okay. But when this okay. is a research paper, and a research mm -hmm. paper, unless there is a section in the paper, and if so, it wouldn't happen until the end of the paper, where mm -hmm. the professor will ask you then something about your ministry, then you can respond with, um, you know, in my ministry, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. But, okay. Right. But what you want to do is, at all costs, you want to you want to not do that. Now, I want to show you right here. So when it comes to your footnotes, you're supposed mm -hmm. to have, um, so you see how you don't have a period at the end of online. Yeah, that was that was kind of degrading. So this is this is not the graded version. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So just remember that you each each um, citation ends with a period, and right. you're supposed to have a space in between the two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if it pushes it over, so what just happened here? What I've always done is I will go back and try to do some deleting um, to mm -hmm. get this to work. Um, yeah. And like, we recognize that, you know, but you're supposed to have a, a space in between it. All okay. right. Um, all right, so this, this, I think, so that's gonna throw it all off, but that's the reason why now. 
Sure. sure. Okay. So here, same thing. For context, I arrange the verses. For context, for context, the verses are arranged to comprise the plot's development. Yeah. You see? Mm hmm Yep. So I'm just gonna say, for context, the verses are arranged. So this is passive voice that we're using right here. Arranged yeah. to comprise, and then you would see the rest of it. Now, is passive voice okay in academic papers? Okay, so it, so passive voice, it depends on the discipline. Um, in or, For here, you would have no choice but to use passive voice. You are not using, your paper is not full of passive voice, right? Mm -hmm. um, for, it just depends on the discipline. Um, here is fine because there's no other way to do it unless you're saying I arranged, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's not academic. Um, so you would have to use passive voice in this instance. So sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to be your own judge about it. You can't have like, like my students who are uh, ELAP, they're English language, American purpose. So my students like mm -hmm. at Montgomery College are just learning, they're, they're new to the country or whatever. Um, wow. Uh huh. So they are. They have to learn. They think, oh, I'm. A, they don't. They don't know the difference between passive voice and active voice. And for them, using passive voice means I have more words. Mm -hmm. The yeah. quote is, um, the quote uh, that belongs to Jeff is on the chair. Instead yeah. of saying Jeff's quote is on the chair, they know that yeah. quote that belongs to because. <laughs> You know, we have word counts for them so yeah. that they can learn how to write more and develop more. Um, wow. So, yeah, so they we, we teach them that the difference between active voice, passive voice, writing between the disciplines. I'm um, again, certain disciplines um, like biology, some of the sciences, they like for mm -hmm. you to use passive voice in reports. Um, mm -hmm. And so it just it just it just depends. But for us. It just depends on how we're how we're arranging our structure. So okay. you know it's okay. So every once in a while it's okay. Right. Okay. And so even here you have, I will discuss this more in deep in the detailed analysis. You don't even have to say that because he he knows the assignment. Like the professor mm -hmm. knows the assignment. Mm -hmm. So I would have just told you to here delete this. Okay. You know, or if you said it. Um, for context, the verses are arranged to comprise the plot development with yada 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 shift central focus from the narrative's climax, which will be discussed in More. in the detail analysis. Yeah, so I, I actually so in the writing I do for my profession, it's uh, the reason I put that in there is to go to active voice is try to stay away from passive voice because that's just something I'm trained to do. So it, if it I get it now. No problem. Right. right. But you thing. see, that would have solved it. Um, oh, climax yeah. comma, which we'll be discussing in detail analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, same thing you have for discussion. I divided. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. just say the passage is divided into five sections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So same thing here. So that's, you know, um, that's just something to, to go back and, and look at. I'm trying to think. So this is the same thing here, number four, what I said before about right. ending a paragraph with that. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing here. I will treat the two verses, same thing again. So Does just that, Like, so that list, that was just, you know, oh, yeah. when, I, when I wrote that down there, I just made sure I looked up biblical thematic cycles and had a source to say so I'm, i guess one of the things if i just if it's just a source of knowledge and i didn't paraphrase it i just check to make sure that those are the thematic seed cycles of the bible is that a quote is a list of words a quote that it's just from a or a, or does that need to be cited where about are you right here in this where i'm pointing at right here no, uh, uh, where it says restoration. Oh, four. okay. Yeah. Um, because is I mean, you have to think about it. This is how you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Common knowledge is what we do not cite. Common okay. knowledge would have to be something that you would have 
This is this is the term. This is the definition of common knowledge. Common knowledge is material that is commonly repeated in well-known sources. Okay, that's okay. common knowledge. Common knowledge, well-known sources would include uh, proverbs, um, mm -hmm. a book. Uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, okay. You know, um, a, a well-known piece of historical information. George Washington was the first president. Um, so he, you know, mm -hmm. those those are what we would consider. Um, common examples of common knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. And then how we judge common knowledge in writing is that believe it or not, the average person uh, who reads in the United States reads on the fifth through eighth grade reading level, believe it or not. Wow, wow. So the average, and so if you think about, if you ever watched, um, what you call the show? Um, the night show that comes on that, um, um, the, the night show that comes at 1130, you know, like they, mm -hmm. they will have, um, sometimes will go on the streets and ask average Americans questions. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because they don't know these answers and you think, are you crazy? You don't know that answer. It's unfortunate. It's not really funny when you look at it in this right. regard, because the average person has not read a book since 12th grade if it right wow. so if you are 40 you think you maybe graduated 17 or 18 you're talking about 22 years of not reading a book yeah right and so the newspapers are only written on that level because mm -hmm. they want to make sure they can get the general populace of people and mm -hmm. so that's what happens so what we look at so that's why it's such a thin line with plagiarism it's a fine line mm -hmm. Because the, the, the rule is, it's better to cite than not to cite. Because, yeah, that's why I do it. Yeah. Right. Because you don't want to um, someone to accuse you of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, no, no. Well, I thought maybe, you no. Know, you know, so you don't want a paper full of quotes. Of course not. But you are letting the reader know, yes, I paraphrase this, but I'm recognizing that I don't know this thematic cycle, you know, mm -hmm. and I am citing what I paraphrase. So no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But once again, just end it, end it with something else. Just come up with a sentence, sure. okay? Mm -hmm. And like I was saying here, I will treat the first two verses deliberately. You didn't need that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and be careful also of your paragraphing. And what I mean by that is only having a handful of words in a paragraph. You see, mm -hmm. like this has 42, excuse me, you only have 42 words in this paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. What's a good paragraph length? Okay, so I'm gonna give you the definition. <laughs> so sure. the, the, um, the grammar book definition of a paragraph is that it has 125 to 150 words in it. Wow. Yeah. So if that equates to what they will tell you is 12 to 18 sentences. Now, this is what a grammar book would tell you. Now, if you have what we call compound complex sentences, of course, you won't, you're not going to have 12 to 18 of those because you're going to have 375 words in a paragraph, which is absolutely too many. So mm -hmm. you, but you, a standard paragraph has a solid 125 words. So that's one thing that I do when I'm writing. I always go back and I look to say, did I have enough in this paragraph? Because I don't want whoever's reading my paper to think I have these just choppy things and I don't mm -hmm. know, um, right, my own organization, you know? So mm -hmm. like here you have their content shocking, um, confounded reader and creative shocking. It's 55 opening words governing the meaning of all the words in which follows. Um, you, you know, you could have just said which follow all the other which follows, for example, and just put them together. Mm -hmm. And you would have had a, a standard look at this just by doing that. Um, sure. You got 185. That's fine because you're using quotes. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the, and here, the first two verses are treated. That's that's the way are treated deliberately. And then you would have gotten rid of this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then then that would have made the paragraph. Mm hmm Okay. So that's what I wanted you to, to see. All right. So back here again, we talked about your um Yeah. Some of them look like this size. They look different. 
It's like it's a gray looking. I don't know why, but just check that. Mm -hmm. Make sure what you're spacing. Okay. Um, here. It looks like you have three footnotes for the same thing. Is that what this was? Well, because the sentence came from three different sources. Okay. The so, of it. All right. So the way you do that from three different sources, you use a semicolon. So you don't do it this way. Oh, okay. okay. So the way you would do it is, um, so eight, nine, and 10, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to show you really fast. Okay. You would do, oh, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Hold on because. Oh, is this where you do all one quote? They're all under one citation number, but then you semicolons between all the quotes. That's what you're doing. I've seen that. Okay, I got okay, that. So you, I don't need to, I mean, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. can do that. Okay, okay so that's... if I have one sentence that has like, I just do one quote right after the other separated by a sentence. Yes. Uh, okay, I saw that in some of the papers that I read. Yeah. I just made that's a note, what... like I got to, okay. Right, because I, I was like, what is eight, nine, ten? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's that's what that is. Okay. Um, all right, and moving on, moving on. So same thing, just looking at the wording, your word count in your paragraphs, mm -hmm. okay? Very short. Yeah, I really, yeah. You see them now, Definitely. right? They're Thank very, you. very short. Yeah, um, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Can't unsee it now, thanks a lot. Look at that. So, um, let me see. Um, yeah, so same thing, you know, like I said, be careful down here. This story shows the reader that God would test us, that's first person plural, mm -hmm. to know the full measure of our love. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not saying this applies to St. Mary's, but I learned this going to seminary and was um, told this. There are a lot of seminarians who do not believe in God. Can you imagine? Really? Yeah. What are they doing in seminary then? Because this was their, how can I say? This was what they wanted to do. <laughs> okay. Isn't that something? Um, and my gosh, I, I hate to tell you, but yeah, at Liberty, I discovered some. Um, really? At yes. Liberty? At, yeah, at, li at Liberty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, um, my subject is Old Testament. Let's, let's just say that, mm -hmm. right? Um, I have gotten a PhD in Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I believe in God. Old Testament is a subject. It is wow. history. Uh, <laughs> right. So there's like, there's Bible scholars out there that don't believe in God then. Yes. Wow. Isn't that something? And I did, I, yeah. I did the same thing. Like when I was told that, and I was like, then I don't, I mean, my mind couldn't understand it. But I thought, wait a minute. Oh, uh, the devil knows the word, right? Yeah. The devil knows Better the word. Better than we do. Okay. Yeah. So it makes sense. Um, it makes sense. It just, there are a lot of them that, you know, they're X, Y, and Z, and they can't understand any, any other interpretation other than what somebody else who they think um, has said, who, who they yeah. find to be reputable and credible. And, mm -hmm. and not for the interpretation that the Holy Spirit has given you because they don't understand the Holy Spirit. Right, right. Um, huh. So, yeah, you, you'll be amazed, but it's a subject. It's a tie, you know, it's, it's yeah. You know, That's I met this, this guy one time. I, I don't remember where I was, and this man was giving. He wrote his, his entire dissertation in Greek. I think he wrote it in Greek. Um, and he did something about the study of the New Testament. And to show his fluency in Greek, huh. he wrote the entire dissertation in Greek. Um, wonderful. It was wonderful. And, and the good thing about him was he wasn't just uh, an academician. He wasn't just a scholar. He believed in God. And mm -hmm. um, I can't remember where he's at one of the universities, I think somewhere in Texas or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he told us, like he stood and he talked to us about that whole thing, about not just being a, a scholar almost being a scientist if you will 
to mm-hmm. to to the Bible. I mean, because they yeah. want to hold it to that litmus test, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like not just that, but also understanding that you have to have a relationship with Christ and what that means, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you you'd be amazed. I mean, so far the 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 professors I've met at St. Mary's, I mean, they are just I can tell they love the Lord, and that's just refreshing. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, isn't it? yeah. It's, it's, it's just so refreshing. But yeah, I'm really glad I ended up there. That was yeah, fun. yeah. It, it's but it's amazing though. The other places you go, like I said, yeah. Wow. Don't tell anybody. Don't share this recording. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about empty spiritual calories, though. Oh my gosh. Huh? <laughs> Reading the Bible and not believing in God just it seems pretty empty. It does, right? But if you look at, if you think about that they're looking at the Bible as a book and only a book, then it makes sense. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, right? It doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to us. Yeah. But, it, you know, for them, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. More power to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's all this here that I was just saying. Just be careful. Us, well, that's all very problems. good. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, And then I think the last thing was I noticed here. So once again, I didn't understand this. You have, you know, just these little short um, statements that you've made here um, Mm -hmm. and and really just combine them. Okay. Um, And then also the word thing, just remember you, that is not academic. So you want to make sure you don't use the word thing in academic writing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just just come you would have just you know combined these use transitional words, you would have been fine. Yeah. Thank you. Right. And don't forget yeah, probably, here with he uh, God tells us as he did Abraham, always remember you capitalize God. I mean yeah. he when it represents God. Yeah. So those are things I noticed. And then, of course, you always, um, even for the, the word bibliography, you want to center. And usually you don't use bold, bolding, bold type. So you got to be careful with that, too. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. But other than that, like reading your paper, the, to me, I like I said, I didn't get a chance to completely read. Oh, let me show you this, too. I'm sure this only probably happened because of us. But you want to always make sure that the, the, the new site right. takes. You know, it's not page to page, so that he sure. pushed it down. But um, I didn't get a chance to like to read the entire paper in detail like I normally would have. But from mm-hmm. what I read, like I, I can definitely tell you understood this assignment and you did a good job with it. I'm telling you, I've read several of these papers this for this um, semester, um, this past semester, and I could tell just by your organization the stuff that you wrote. I was like, yeah, he he can write. So well, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, it just takes me forever. Yeah, I'm trying to be more efficient about it. Yeah. So, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I I, uh, I like to write informally, and I've just learned that that's not what I'm supposed to do. So right. I'll, I'll definitely. Okay, great. Well, so um, what I can recommend, like I said, is that um, moving on with your next assignment, if you want me to look uh-huh. at it, just it's send an email and ask me to uh, review your paper. Just give me enough time to review it. And uh-huh. um, and then, I mean, I know you will because you'll have already finished it. So, right. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. so just give me enough time. And then, you know, we can do this again if you want to. I mean, that would be great. That's fine. I have no problems with it. So normally for the summer right now, I'm doing Zoom meetings on Tuesday nights. Um, and, and, but I try to read the papers during the week. So if you have a paper and you want to send it, you don't have to, please don't wait till Tuesday to send it, you know, go ahead (laughs) and send it, you know, and I'll read it. Actually, what I, what I'd like to do is, uh, I took the summer off to Mm -hmm. work on my writing and gather my thoughts. I'd like to go, if you wouldn't mind, like this, this paper, go back, take what you told me and everything, fix it all and send it to you if you wouldn't mind reading it. Oh, sure. That's fine. Okay. That'd be perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Great. <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. I'll be, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be seeking your help in the fall. 
All right, you're welcome. And so what I'm gonna do is, I like I said, I recorded this. It uh, has to convert, so it, uh, Zoom can be very slow in converting. Yes. Uh, so you probably won't get it tonight. Um, That's but all right. I, yeah, as soon as I get the recording, I will email you, and I'll probably email you from the my pastor email. Um, because okay. For some reason, I cannot get my EI writing on this one. Uh, for some reason, it's on my cell phone, but it doesn't mean no good, you know, uh, yeah. having it on my cell phone when it comes to things yeah. like this. So uh, as soon as I get it downloaded and converted. I will uh, email it to you and I'll email you our little um, synopsis of our meeting from tonight. Well, thank you very much. This was a good session. I'm, I'm grateful. You're welcome. So you have All a right. blessed evening. I'm going to go out here and water you my well. tomato plant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You enjoy. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye.